Hey guys, this is Andrew Suter, pastor of Bible Baptist Church here in Asheville, North Carolina. Wanted to come to you with a very interesting video on the 10 alien toes of the Antichrist kingdom. Now, I know what you're probably thinking, that this is some kind of clickbait video, but I promise you this is not clickbait. Everything in that title, I'm going to show you from the scriptures, okay? The 10 alien toes of the Antichrist kingdom. If you'll notice with me in Daniel chapter number 2, Daniel chapter number 2, starting at verse 41, what we find here is King Nebuchadnezzar has had a dream, okay? You may know King Nebuchadnezzar from the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the three Hebrew children that got thrown in the fire, okay? This was that Nebuchadnezzar. And so in chapter 2, he's had a dream. He sees an image with a head of gold and the rest of the body silver and brass and iron. And then he gets down to the toes and the feet, and they're made of iron and clay mixed. And a rock made without hands comes and destroys the image, okay? And so Nebuchadnezzar is trying to figure out what this dream means. Well, Daniel interprets the dream for him. And Daniel says in chapter number 2 and verse number 41, giving the interpretation of this dream, and he's talking about all the kingdoms, so all the previous, you know, the, the gold and the silver and the brass and iron, all that are kingdoms that have existed in history. And the last kingdom here, represented by the toes and the feet, it's the kingdom of the Antichrist, okay, which is a future kingdom, not here yet. Soon, might, might be very soon. But notice what Daniel says about this kingdom of the Antichrist, this last kingdom. He says, And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. But there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. So notice we've got something going on here where the iron is trying to mix with clay and it's, represent, and it's a representation of somebody, some group of people mingling their seeds with men. Now notice what it says in verse 44. Mingling themselves with the seed of men, excuse me. Now notice verse 44. And in the days of these kings, so we find out that these, the they of verse 43, these are kings represented by ten toes. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall be uh, shall not be left to other people, but it shall be uh, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Now what you find here is that the Antichrist kingdom being represented by ten toes. Now if you know anything about the Bible, you understand that in the last days during the tribulation period, Jesus very clearly in Luke chapter number 17, and let me go there quickly to get you the exact ver uh, verse reference here. Luke chapter 17 and verse 26, it says, And as it was in the days of Noe, so shall it uh, be also in the days of the Son of Man. So we find here that in order to understand what it's going to be like in the last days during the tribulation period, we've got to understand what it was like during the days of Noah. And if you go all the way back to Genesis chapter number 6, we find out what was going on in the days of Noah. So go to Genesis chapter number 6 if you have a Bible in front of you, and look at what it says here. It says in Genesis chapter 6 and verse number 1, it says, and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. So notice the sons of God saw the daughters of men and took wives of them. Now, who are these sons of God? Well, according to Job chapter number 38 and verse number 7, these sons of God were around all the way back when God created the earth. When God is laying the foundation of the earth, the Bible says that the sons of God were there rejoicing. 
And if you notice in verse number 4 of Genesis chapter 6, it says, these, uh, excuse me, there were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. So notice, these sons of God and these daughters of men married, produced children, and there were giants in the land because of it. They produced these gigantic beings. So this is what was going on in the days of Noah. So if the Bible says that it's going to be like the days of Noah at the end of, of time, the end days, then we understand that there's going to be some of this stuff going on again. These were fallen angelic beings that came down to earth and were producing giants with the daughters of men. If you don't believe that, then may I also show you Jude, chapter number 1, obviously, because there's only one chapter in Jude. But Jude chapter number 1 and verse number 6 and 7 is very clear. Jude chapter 1, verses number 6 and 7 says this. If I can get there quickly. It says, And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. So notice there are angels that left their... They, the Bible says they kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. Now look at verse number 7. Even as... So there is a connection between what was going on in verse 6, the angels leaving their own habitation... And the sin of verse number 7 of Sodom and Gomorrah, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them, in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh. Now, if you remember Jesus in Luke 17, if you've ever read over there, also says that it would be like the days of Lot in the end times. Well, now, what was the sin of Sodom. Obviously, homosexuality played into it. But notice also those two men that the men of the city desired, they were angels. Those two men, they were angelic beings. And the men of Sodom wanted those men. The Bible says uh, that they came to Lot and said, bring those men out that we may know them, okay? That's King James Bible talk for, for rape, okay? They weren't the welcoming committee. They didn't want to shake hands and introduce themselves. They wanted to know those angelic beings. So now notice this. The sin of the angels is the same one connected with Sodom. And the Bible says that what was going on in, in verse number 6 with the angels leaving their own habitation, the sons of God saw the daughters of men. That's Genesis 6, the days of Noah. Then we find verse number 7, the days of Lot, Sodom and Gomorrah. It's all pointing back to the fact that what was going on in both of these time periods, especially in Genesis chapter number 6, was the fact that angels, fallen angels, were having immoral relationships and it's even marrying, there were, there were some even marrying the daughters of men and they were producing giants in the land, these half-demoniac, half-human offsprings that God has to destroy with the flood. Now, if you don't believe that, not my problem. But we find here back in Daniel chapter number 2 that these ten kings are going to be mingling themselves with the seed of men, but they will not cleave one to another. These ten kings are quote-unquote aliens. I believe that the, the alien deception is coming. And I believe that the alien deception is going to uh, be the explanation for the rapture. I believe that if millions of people, even possibly billions of people disappear, they've got to explain that somehow. And what better way to do that than with aliens? They were all abducted. The aliens came and took them all away. Now, if you read over in Revelation chapter 17, we find the fulfillment of Daniel chapter number 2. Look at Revelation chapter 17 and verse number 12. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, ten toes, ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. That's the Antichrist. These have one mind and shall give their power 
and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And if you look down at verse number 16 through 18, it says that the ten horns, they turn on the whore, they hate the whore, they turn on her, and uh, basically the Bible says that they kill her and they burn her with fire and all that. And the, wo and the woman is the great city, which is Rome. We don't have time to get into all that. I have another video on that on my YouTube channel, and a little card will show up right here with a link to that video about why the great whore of the city is Rome. And you can go and check that out. But folks, here it is. Here it all is wrapped up. All the scriptures. Now, you ready? It is very obvious, at least to me, and I think to anybody that lets the Bible speak for, you know, just, just speak and say, you know, uh, mean what it says and says what it means, that there is a kingdom coming, the kingdom of the Antichrist, where there are going to be ten kings who are not men. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. So these are not men. They are uh, not extraterrestrial beings because they're of this earth. They are, listen guys, I am a firm believer that there are things here, demonic powers, spiritual powers of darkness on this earth. They're going to deceive the nations. They're going to rule with the Antichrist. They're going to try to mingle themselves with men like they did in Genesis 6. But this time it's not going to take for whatever reason. But the Bible says, though, that Jesus Christ is going to come, destroy that kingdom, and thank God, Revelation 11, the kingdoms of this world are going to become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so, folks, let me say this. Don't be deceived. Now, I don't think we're going to be here for one iota of the tribulation. I think at any moment Jesus will come back and we're out of here. I am pre-trib all the way. But we may see some crazy stuff before we get out of here. And so be aware that the Bible has all this mapped out well before it ever happened. And so me and you don't need to be slumbering. We shouldn't be deceived. We are children of the light. We have the book to tell us what's going to happen. And so be sober, be vigilant, and be aware that the devil's working, but thank God the Lord is going to take care of it all. And we read the back of the book, and we know that we win, all right? Hope you've learned something. Hope you've enjoyed this video. God bless you is my prayer. Thanks for watching the video. Wanted to tell you about my book that came out just this past December, Divorced But Not Demoted. If you know somebody that's divorced, especially a preacher, or if you are divorced yourself, uh, get this book. You can go on Amazon.com, just search in Andrew Sluter, and it'll come up. We're also going to leave a description, the link in the descriptions, so you can go down there and get that. This is a book about biblical divorce and remarriage. Is divorce always a sin? The answer is no, all right? And is remarriage a sin? The answer is no, and I go through all of that in this book. You can go there. This is a great encouragement to people who've been divorced, divorced but not demoted, and you can get that on Amazon. Only $6.50 if you want to paperback copy of it, or you can get it a ebook version of it for $2.99. So go on Amazon.com and you can get this book. Thank you and God bless you is my prayer.